The sun is a massive ball of nuclear plasma that its own weight keeps it from exploding. On the other hand, the sun has a complex inner structure and a wide range of temperature variations on and under its surface. So, how hot is the sun? Strong gravitational forces cause immense pressures and temperatures, which produce the sun's heat. These gravitational forces compress hydrogen atoms at the sun's core to the point where they fuse to form helium. This process is known as nuclear fusion, and it generates a lot of energy. At the current rate of nuclear fusion in the sun, astronomers estimate that the sun will burn up in around 4 billion years. The sun's inner core can reach temperatures of up to 15 million degrees Celsius, 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. Nuclear fusion produces huge amounts of energy that travels outward from the core to what is called the radiative zone, where it bounces around for up to 1 million years. When the energy escapes the radiative zone, it reaches the convective zone, the uppermost layer of the sun's interior. This layer has a temperature of about 2 million degrees Celsius, 3.5 million degrees Fahrenheit. Large bubbles of hot plasma form a soup of ionized atoms and rise to the photosphere. From the convective zone, the energy then reaches the sun's surface and disperses through the sun's atmosphere. The photosphere, the first layer of the sun's atmosphere, has a temperature of about 5,500 degrees Celsius, 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, the sun's radiation is detected as visible light. There are areas called sunspots in the photosphere, which are cooler and darker than the surrounding area. Temperatures at the center of big sunspots can be as low as 4,000 degrees Celsius, 7,300 degrees Fahrenheit. The next layer of the sun's atmosphere, the chromosphere, is a tad cooler, around 4,320 degrees Celsius, 7,800 degrees Fahrenheit. The term chromosphere literally means sphere of color, according to the National Solar Observatory, NSO. Visible light from the chromosphere is generally too weak to be seen against the brighter photosphere. But during total solar eclipses, when the moon covers the photosphere, the chromosphere is seen as a red rim around the sun. It appears red due to the high content of hydrogen gas in the chromosphere. Lastly is the corona, the sun's crown. Surprisingly, temperatures shoot back up in this layer despite it being the furthest from the core. According to the NSO, temperatures range from 1 million degrees Celsius, 1.7 million degrees Fahrenheit, to more than 10 million degrees Celsius, 17 million Fahrenheit. Just like the chromosphere, the corona can also be seen during a solar eclipse as a bright halo around the sun. Sometimes the corona produces something called coronal mass ejection, CME. This is a massive outpouring of solar wind and strong magnetic fields into space. When a CME is directed towards Earth, it generates a geomagnetic storm, which can damage the planet's magnetic fields. This may cause radio, satellite, and electrical communications to be disrupted, as well as power outages. On a basic level, we would anticipate the corona, the outermost layer, to be the coolest because the sun's source of energy is at the center. Astronomers are still not sure how parts of the corona may become as hot as the sun's core. Some think that intense energy waves are released into the atmosphere, while others think it could be due to the magnetic forces in the corona. A Swedish scientist, Hans Alfven, proposed an explanation for this. He theorized that magnetized plasma waves could carry huge amounts of energy from the sun's interior to the corona along the sun's magnetic field. The energy bypasses the photosphere before exploding with heat in the sun's upper atmosphere. Beyond the corona is the sun's extended atmosphere, the heliosphere which is less of a layer per se and more of a zone of influence that the sun exerts. While superheated, 
charged particles can be sent flying from a star into its heliosphere by solar winds or flares. This is significantly cooler than the layers we've discussed previously. The heliosphere's main component is magnetic, and it plays an important role in forming the sun's shield around our solar system. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and click the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos.